Operation Podcast Production. I would say it's really mindset because those people that I talked to who are doing background for their entire lives didn't seem like they had any ambition to do anything else. And if they did, they weren't driven enough mm-hmm. or motivated enough to make things happen, kind of just going with the flow. And you see that in life. It's oh, like, yeah. you know, people that don't hustle, don't grind. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, look, if this is a race, bro, you about to lose because you are not putting your right in front of the left. You're just kind of standing there. Yeah, when I blow up, I'm a sore high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living out my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole wrist covered up in ice. Dealership, never ask the price. I hit the molly ball with my dogs. Yeah, I swipe it once without thinking twice. Cause this what I was made for. Man, I know this what I came for. On a big stage, couple thousand people, and they do whatever I say so. Have chicks that color of the rainbow. Yeah, chains on me like Django. Be alone. Hey, I'm Janisha Adams Ginyard, your favorite Dora Milaje from Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Just call me Known Blay. I'm here with Ruben, the host of Live Through Love, and we are talking all things love, Wakanda, manifestation, positivity, and you know, Janisha. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live Through Love. I'm your host, Ruben Rojas, and thank you for tuning in. Hi. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thanks for having me. How far is Wakanda from here? Uh, it's about 2,500 miles. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> I was first class, you know. Well, in those jets, you can yeah. get here like that. <laughs> so like, I'm super excited to have you here because I'm, believe it or not, a super Marvel geek. Oh, As a yay. kid, I had the comics and the this and the that. And, you know, since 2008, since they've been making these movies, like I have to see them in theaters. There's no other option. There is no other option. And we've got an amazing sequel coming out in Wakanda forever yes and I absolutely love the first one but like I want to I want to learn a about you and your journey and who you are and you know how we really talk about love and bring this in but let's geek out about the movie a little bit come on it's amazing <laughs> Black Panther Wakanda forever is absolutely amazing there's so much love um love (laughs) there's so much love poured into this movie because we're really just showing our support and we're honoring chad because Mm -hmm. his presence was missed on set but i think the finished product everyone will be super happy and satisfied with what um we came up with yeah because that was i was that that's the ultimate test of this film like what happened his passing that was really sad no one knew about it It not a single person that I know yeah, knew even about it. Working with him. Yeah, I mean, we did not have a clue that he was enduring that mm-hmm. while shooting Black Panther. I mean, we had long days, extreme weather conditions in mm-hmm. Atlanta, from the hot to the cold, freezing. We did scenes in water. I mean, just knowing that he went through all of that mm-hmm. and was having his own battle and suffering um, with his health is crazy. It's just like, wow, this guy is awesome. Mm -hmm. What a measure of grit and work ethic and Mm -hmm. professionalism. I mean, uh, showing up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right. Just showing up. Didn't miss a day, you know? Um, It just, he was such a light like such Mm -hmm. such a beautiful spirit and he had great energy i mean at any point in time you could talk to him he'll stay in his wakandan accent or then he might bust out into his james brown you know Mm -hmm. foot shuffle or whatever um but he was awesome chadwick made sure that the set stayed like a family like Mm -hmm. a community he was always throwing parties he did not care if you were grips or electric or lighting or the janitor like Mm -hmm. It was an invitation to everybody, all mm. cast, all crew. At his house, he had food, drinks, you know, all of that. And you don't find that with a lot of celebrities and yeah. l- leading actors. They just don't do that. If you're not the top 10 on the call sheet, you ain't going to their house. You know what I mean? Yeah. They might not even look in your direction. <laughs> That's shitty. That is just shitty. <laughs> that, but it exists. You know, I'm not grabbing any of this out of the sky. And he was not like that. So, um, yeah, he was special. 
Yeah, and, and you know, he, he, he is missed and he will always be missed. Yes. And I love hearing that. And I love hearing that about people that I look up to, especially in the industry. Like you totally. are in the limelight and you do put in the work. It's mm-hmm. not easy. And, you know, there's very few people that realize like it takes everyone to make this movie. And Absolutely. It takes the fans, you know, but uh, let's talk about you. Let's talk about your role in this. Yeah. Who you are, what you do and how'd you become you so i'm janisha i am half jamaican yes i like to rep my caribbean roots Mm -hmm. but i'm originally from california i am cerritos grew up at gar high school Mm -hmm. i went to gar high school i should say not grew up in gar high school but i went to gar high school where i was a student athlete i was voted uh, most athletic my senior year i was voted uh, miss gar high school Mm. you know yes I graduated with high honors. Mm. I'm smart. And then I went to UC Berkeley, Go Bears, when it was the Pac-10, so I bleed blue and gold. Uh-oh. Yeah. Trojans. Oh, God. Cut. <laughs> okay, I'm just... <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh, my God. Well, anyways, you guys are getting ready to leave the Pac, uh, Pac-10, mm-hmm. Pac-12 conference anyway, so <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, Went to Berkeley, majored in linguistics and African-American studies with an emphasis on Caribbean culture. Mm -hmm. And with all of that, you know, since the age of nine years old, I knew I wanted to be a sports commentator and sign language interpreter for deaf athletes. Mm -hmm. That was my main professional goal. I was looking at Lisa Salters, Pam Oliver, Bob Costas, like all growing up. So Mm -hmm. I just knew I wanted to do something with like commentating on the mic with sports um, as a professional. Fast forward in college, I do track and field. Again, I'm sticking with the student athlete portion of my life. And um, I started working in radio. I was on air radio personality uh, with Clear Channel San Francisco, mm-hmm. and which is now iHeart. And that kind of, you know, started the whole like reporting thing. I was doing stuff uh, like field reporting. I was interviewing like Warriors, go to State Warrior players, mm-hmm. some 49er players. Um, yeah. And then after college and doing all that, I joined the U S national bobsled team. Mm. Yes. Cool runnings. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm Jamaican. I did track and field. I mean, it's like the perfect match. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did that for a little bit. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not trying to look like no Amazon, you know, cause we're pushing like 500 pound sleds. Mm-hmm. I'm doing you know, what I can do, which is my Olympic weightlifting, cleans, jerks and all that. Mm -hmm. But I'm really not trying to bulk up. So I'm like, I need to do something else, but still related to sports and Mm -hmm. athletics. And I decide I want to do sports modeling. So I make that transition. Literally, I make the transition by saying, I'm gonna do sports modeling. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just like that. Yeah, and I did like so many Nike campaigns, like Nike CrossFit, Nike soccer, Nike running, Mm -hmm. even like basketball. Never played basketball on any team, but I did Nike. Pose for photo. Yeah, you know, (laughs) pretty much that's it, and that's what actually kind of sparked the transition into stunts Mm -hmm. because I was doing the sports modeling, and I started doing acting. I was always a jock on on a commercial or a TV show. Uh But when I was doing the print, I kind of got tired of just standing there, like holding the kettlebell or like you said, just like, shoot, that's it. Uh And it's like, I want more physicality. I want to be being blasted down hallways and like being thrown into like brick walls. Just wake up one day, like (laughs) throw me down those stairs, please. (laughs) I kind of like wanted that. And um, I watched a movie, this guy was running very horribly. like very very horribly. I do that a lot in the movies, by the way. Yes, it's so bad. It's like, come on, man. Y'all got trainers for everything. Y'all to get this guy a a, a runner, a coach, mm-hmm. something. And me being a track and field athlete, I'm like, how is this making the final cut? He's running same arm, same leg. I ran track and field too, so I every time I see a running, scene, I'm like, really, guys, girls, all of them, like. And then you're like, oh, no wonder you hurt your hamstring. And they had to <laughs> shut down production for a few weeks. <laughs> right, because they're just running all over the place. Yeah. No form, no control. Just, just, How about when they don't move their arms? Just bad. It's so bad. Yeah. Well, the guy that I saw, which kind of put it in my head, like, you can do stunts, same arm, same leg. And it that made... takes, That's a special skill. 
<laughs> it ain't track though. Uh-uh. And so I saw this and then I saw that, I saw this guy doing that in the movie and saw all these stunt credits. And I'm like, I could totally do stunts. Like I went to college and ran, like I was mm-hmm. little Jackie Joyner Kersey. I did hurdles and heptathlon. I could totally do stunts. Mm-hmm. So it was there, I kind of transitioned. I hired a private tumbling coach and we were in the gym three times a week before the gym opened. And then I stayed the additional two hours of the open gym working on what we had already worked on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was putting in that work. That's what it takes. Yes. So that's kind of how I got into the industry. Yeah. So what was your first role? My first job was I was doing stunts on a drive time commercial. Mm. Yes, I was the um, stunt saleswoman. That was my role name. And it was the, the whole premise of the commercial was this family came into drive time because they were having a problem changing their oil. They changed their, they were, they were having a car problem. And so the family took it upon themselves to change their um, oil because their car was like messed up. They come into drive time soaked in oil. And I'm the salesperson walking by with a stack of papers, slipping the motor oil, boom, and I fall. Ah. Yeah, I fall back and the papers fly in the sky. Yeah, that Ooh, was like my classic first. Classic slip and fall. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. In Hershey's chocolate, AKA motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah it's like you know elmer's glue is like either melted cheese or the milk and cereal really yeah the, i mean this the stuff for the commercial food is, oh yeah yeah, yeah. The, it's insane yeah i learned that you should have saw there was tubs of this hershey chocolate on set yeah tubs of it <laughs> <laughs> tubs of it so so that was your first commercial yes you continued doing the work now, yes but, but let's talk about breaking into the industry is it mm-hmm. is it difficult getting into this industry is it difficult as a woman is it talk to me about that yeah so i would say mindset is everything mm-hmm. because when I started out, again, I started out acting first because I already came from like the print sports background. So I was, I had a familiarity with mm-hmm. set life and set work and ethics and stuff. But when I was making that transition over into the other areas, um, I was doing like background, like you could catch me doing background one day, principal the next day, like mm-hmm. that was the hustle and grind in me. And I will say this, I was meeting background people who had been doing background for like 10 years and like five years. And I'm Mm. like, I don't know what's wrong with them. Like, I don't know how you do it. So I've, I've done a lot of work in the space. Yes. And then there's like, there's background and there's levels to background. There is like, bruh, there's a hierarchy. Okay. I was the shirtless guy that got paid a lot to say (laughs) nothing but stand there sometimes. I'm like, this is really weird. Yeah. There's like featured background, Uh you know, and it's like the background is always next to main talent. And I'm just like, I said, God, I'm not doing background for no 10 years, five years. I'm not doing it for a year. I'm giving you three months. I, I, this is a conversation I have got. I'm giving you three months to Mm -hmm. get me in this union. I was in the union in three months. I literally was Taft Hartley two months into my career doing a Gatorade commercial that Mm -hmm. was directed by Joe Pitka. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So I would say it's really mindset because those people that I talked mm-hmm. to who were doing background for their entire lives didn't seem like they had any ambition to do anything else. And if they did, they weren't driven enough mm-hmm. or motivated enough to make things happen, kind of just going with the flow. And you see that in life. It's oh, like, yeah. you know, people that don't hustle, don't grind, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, look, if this is a race, bro, you about to lose because you are not putting your right in front of the left. You're just kind of standing there. Yeah, you could be an athlete or a spectator and there's a lot Pretty of Pretty much. And there's a lot of spectators, a lot of spectators mm-hmm. and a lot of spectators who talk too. That's yeah. The worst. <laughs> so yeah. Like, you're um, lucky, or you're this, or someone. Yeah, it's the like door this ain't you. luck, yeah. bro. This is <laughs> this is not luck. This is doing the work. This yeah. is the hustle, the grind. You know, I don't sleep. I don't get enough. I don't get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I will sleep in my grave. I tell you that. Yeah. And when I do sleep, I sleep well at night. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Comfortable. 
very comfortable accomplished. accomplished so let's just talk about the, the mindset the yes. attitude because earlier he's like just like that i shifted and i became a sports model and just like that i did it. so it sounds like you make up your mind pretty quickly Mm -hmm. So that's an attitude and that's obviously how you're wired. Yeah. But what is the mindset behind that? Cause you're like, I'm not going to settle mm -mm. and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it my effort here. Cause you also know that there is a long game or there is an effort or mm -hmm. we have to build upon that. Yeah. So what does that look like for you? So I think everything is kind of related and intertwined and aligned with each other because all of these are disciplines and, mm -hmm. and I mean, it is a work ethic because everything that I'm doing kind of relates to each other. It's tools that I've acquired, you know, mindset, uh, working hard, not giving up, being determined, being mm -hmm. driven, self-motivated. So you know, that all just starts back with how I was raised. You know, I'm a smart cookie. You know, I was raised smart, like believe in yourself, mm -hmm. you know, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't kill, all these different things. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going through college and I graduate because I work hard and do all that, then it's now you're an athlete. Same thing. You need those same same skills. You got to train you got to put in the work, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to be able to go out and, and win first place in my hurdles if I don't go practice and work out every day. Yep. And so all of that is related to work in the professional world mm -hmm. at, for my career stunts. I never did stunts ever in my life, but I went and did the work, the research. I knew if I wanted to be a stunt performer, I need to figure out, okay, I need to know some air awareness. I need to get my gymnastics on. I need to mm. get some tumbling under my belt because if I'm gonna be on a wire, I need to know what my body is doing when I'm 30 feet in the air. Learning so, how to fall. Learning how to properly fall because mm -hmm. let me tell you, that stuff matters. You know, you can be walking out in these LA streets, hit that uneven sidewalk. Oh yeah. You know, boom, on Gotta the ground. Hey, you should roll that shoulder over, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not going to the hospital today. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, <laughs> break my wrist. What happened? <laughs> Grass was a little long yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> that tree root is yeah. coming up from this sidewalk, mm -hmm. LA County. So yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a real thing. And it's, yeah. A lot of it is and just realizing that, but you're taking responsibility and we yeah. could jest in all of this, but like you're learning and choosing and the attitude and the mindset and the work ethic. And I hear the passion coming out of you, Yeah. but you also never put yourself in a box. You're like, well, I was really smart and I was the smartest honor kid, but then I became a college athlete, but you weren't just like, well, I'm just an athlete. What's next? Yeah. You continued evolving and moving forward, but you've built upon that past. Absolutely. And I like to consider myself a multi hyphenate. Like I will never let anyone put me in a box and group me into you were just this or mm -hmm. you're just that it's like no 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 i was born a multi-hyphenate i've always had a student dash athlete you know label and that comes with other things mm -hmm. but the underlying you know underground foundation is always going to be work hard put in the work hustle grind stay motivated stay mm -hmm. driven because in our industry in hollywood you have to be that way you know, you can't take no for an for uh, no is not an option. Mm -hmm. You can't just someone tells you, no, you're just going to stop. You're just going to give up. Hey, you go out on an audition. You didn't get the part. So yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be like, no, I don't act no more. No, no, no. That's not the end. That's not how my story ends. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to keep at it. Keep at it. You know, you, you're not going to win every race. You're not going to book every role. But boy, oh boy, the ones you do, oh, the yeah. ones you do, mm -hmm. that's the reward. It's because you kept at it well how many no's do you have to get to get to that one you don't know exactly you don't know that's the that's the fun in the journey mm -hmm. but my mind tells me i'm getting yeses so i don't really care about your no's that's how i look at it like oh you tell me no that means for me that means not with you mm -hmm. you know there you go <laughs> yeah that's a reframe yeah this not with you oh okay i didn't get this part okay i'm not working with you today or this time mm -hmm. you know but you'll be surprised you know uh, a casting director might tell you no at this point for this role for this job and you see that casting director you know, maybe a year or two from now, mm -hmm. they're casting another project and you're perfect. And now you got your yes, you know? So make sure you're memorable, kind, and <laughs> say thank you. Yeah. See you next time, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, but stay driven, you mm -hmm. know, because in the process of the no's, I'm not stopping work. 
I'm not stopping my training. I'm not stopping my acting classes. I'm just building on because I'm going to be ready when my name's called. Yeah. My mom always said it's better to be it's better to be ready and not needed than to be needed and not ready. Mm. You know? Yeah. And out here, you know, people say, you know, we got, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You know, it's the same thing. But my mm -hmm. mom was saying that way before y'all. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's that's my mindset. You know, no, it's not an option. I am going to give 120 percent whatever it is that I'm putting um, myself in. My mom, always said, my mom always said, be a student of the sport. I knew I wanted to do stunts. I had to do research. What I need to do. OK, pick up some bass and tumbling, train, hire a coach work with that coach. Not, mm -hmm. And then when you work with that coach, work on what you worked on with that coach by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? What you do when no one's looking. Facts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of how I approach everything. No, it's awesome. Yes. It sounds simple. It's honestly, it is simple. People, it's an athlete's mindset. It's an athlete's mindset. It's a winning mindset. You know, no excuses. No excuses, just do. People will find a million excuses on why not to do something mm -hmm. right, but won't give you no excuses why they did some shit wrong. Mm -hmm. Can I cuss on here? Sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, just no excuses, just do. Nike has their whole slogan, just do it. Mm -hmm. Not no, think about it, mull it over. No, just do it. It, it comes down to decision making. Yeah. I get the same 24 hours you do. I got the same Monday through Sunday you got, mm -hmm. you know? So I want to hear I'm lucky. No, I've decided, I've made a choice to live happy, to live out my passion, to operate in my purpose. And you mm -hmm. could do the same thing. Yeah. But don't be getting mad at me because you walking into a job nine to five that you don't like. You know? That's why I made my changes. I know, yeah, right? So we all make our changes. Okay, yeah. When we get fed up enough. And we, we are making Bingo. the choice. You're making the choice. But if you're not making the choice, someone's making the choice for you. The choice is being made. The choice is being made. Who making it? Exactly. <laughs> Who's making it? I don't give I don't give nobody power over this. Nobody's in power over mm -hmm. this life. With as few things as we can actually control in our life, let's control those few things. There's like so true. There's like five things we could actually control. So That's true. It. So true. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So let's dive into the movie. So okay. you worked on the first Black Panther, right? Correct. I'm an original. So what what is your character? <laughs> and honestly, what does it feel to work on such a culturally impactful film? I mean, the thing broke boundaries for yeah. black filmmaking, for, for comic book movies, yeah. for storytelling. How did that feel? And then being part of that and leading into this next thing. Yeah, so working on the first Black Panther was... A dream come true. I'm very big into vision boards. Marvel was on my vision board. Had no idea how it was going to happen, but that's the whole point of vision boards. Mm. You don't know. You just vision it. You you and you walk as if it is going to happen. So that was so rewarding. Um, being a part of that first Panther. Mm -hmm. While we're shooting, while we're doing the scenes, I know that this is good. It's Marvel, right? It's got the stamp of approval. Marvel. This is going to be a great movie. But when I saw the finished product, it had exceeded my expectations by mm -hmm. leaps and bounds. I knew we were making something good. I was on set and you could see Ryan's brain kind of like thinking like, yo, you know, you know, with the scene, because he'll he'll talk to you on set and he'll tell you like, what, hey, this is what we're doing today or this is kind of what, you know, the doors are doing and, you know, and he's, you know, oh, okay. So you see the processing mm -hmm. that he's doing in his head, especially with the casino scene, which was so epic mm -hmm. and just with everything. And then when I saw that finished product, I said, wow, the detail and the costumes, the, the color scheme with the red, the green and the black mm -hmm. being the Af Pan-African colors and stuff. It was it was amazing. Mm -hmm. The storyline itself, it was an origin story. Nobody knew, you know, how the Black Panther was going to be done because mm -hmm. it hadn't been done. So but he the way he. I mean, he just set a a, 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 a height or a, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, it was just out of this world, basically. He set a bar. He set a bar. That's the word. Yeah. He set a bar. And you're just like, wow. Because so many people out there was like, didn't think it would, could be done because it was a all black led action hero, superhero movie. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
Black people are consumers. What you mean? You don't think we're going to go out and go see this? What? Right. Hello? <laughs> Who's doing these stats here? <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah, and it was just so well done. And Chadwick, you know, boy, oh boy, did he deliver on that T'Challa. Mm -hmm. He just, he delivered. And you had Angela Bassett. So you had all these people who are stars in the game and contribute and be a part of it. And so it was movie magic mm -hmm. so being a part of it was absolutely amazing because then i'm on comic cons i'm doing the comic con circuit i see girls dressed as adora milaje with my facial tattoo and i'm like yo crazy mm -hmm. because before that if it was like a halloween thing i mean what black characters would people dress up for halloween i couldn't think of any right i, I really couldn't yeah, hell, I do. I'm very big in Halloween. I never dressed up. <laughs> I haven't dressed up as a black I mean, character. Halle Berry and Storm. My wife dressed up as oh, her. Oh, very cool. There, okay, an yeah. Um, yeah. But I yeah, mean, I'm, I'm kind of trying to thinking head. about it. Yeah, unless it's athletes or pretty much. Yeah, but as far as like that fandom culture, that yeah. geek culture, there were no African American characters that people were dressing up as. Mm -hmm. So when you had Black Panther hit the scene, it was like. Like, oh, little black boys, little black girls was like, oh, I'm going to be Killmonger. I could be the Black Panther. I could mm -hmm. be Shuri. I could be the scientist. And it was all these roles that you don't see on the screen. You know, you don't see black woman as king or black guy as king or, or warrior, strong warrior mm -hmm. women, right? You know, you didn't see that. So it was a, it was a very positive thing for the culture. Yeah. And I was happy to be a part of it you know, bald head, shaved head and all, you know? <laughs> Cause you had the Dora Milaje's and we were, you know, melanin was popping. Mm -hmm. All shapes and sizes and just beautiful and strong and confident. And I think people needed to see that. Not just, um, you know, black girls needed to see people who look like them on screen for sure, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But the world needed to see that. Everybody needs to see that. Like, there are other roles out here that you can cast black women in Okay. And so I think um it was really that was that was good mm. that they that they did that. So does your character evolve from the first one to the next one? Yeah, so in the first Black Panther, I'm identified with my facial tattoo, mm -hmm. which is over the right side of my face. And I was also lucky in the first one to also be the Okoye stunt double. Mm -hmm. So I was going back and forth between my character and then Okoye. And she's a badass from Walking Dead. Yes, so like deny. Yeah. So she had the facial tattoo. Uh, the, um, I'm sorry. She tattoo. had the head tattoo uh, when she was the general. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool. I mean, the transition to doing both was pretty much almost flawless because one, we're on the same team in the movie. We're using the same weapon, our spears. So it was nothing different about that. Mm -hmm. It was just when I would transition outside of my character and to go to double Koye, I'm an extension of that character, what she's created. So I'm making sure that, you know, I'm moving. I, my movements are, are the same. And what is she dominant right hand, left hand? And, and that was, you know, pretty much what I had to make sure I did just to extend Okoye's mm -hmm. character because we were both doing the same thing as far as like spears and fighting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so then fast forward, we go over to Avengers Infinity War, go over to Endgame, go over to Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's when my character got a name. Now, I do have to say this. So my character was... Um, the first door to speak outside of the movie. I don't know if you remember, but in 2018, the Super Bowl Lexus commercial, I was driving the Lexus and I was like, well done, my king. Yeah, and so that was my character and I had the facial tattoo. And so at that point, I'm like, they're really, Marvel is on it. They, they know exactly what they're doing. They have a plan. Oh, yeah. There is a plan that they have because at Falcon and Winter Soldier, I didn't know about the name. I didn't, my name, Nomblay, means beauty. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that the name was going to be given, what they meant, or all any of that. So Marvel is a well-oiled machine. They do research. They There is a method to the madness. Mm -hmm. um, they're very um, specific, you know, and... 
you just got to love working with people like that. Actually, they, there's a plan. There's a, it's a plan involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So my character's name got introduced in the Falcon and Winter Soldier. And then now I'm just over at Black Panther Wakanda forever. You know, just being known, Blay. Just me, me, me. Now. Just me, me. Yeah. You know, just being me. So, yes. Super cool. Yes. Well, I can't wait to see it. Like, really. I just. Yeah. I've only seen the trailer once. Only once? The, well, here's the thing. I started, I love trailers. Okay. But I stopped watching trailers, mm-hmm. especially for movies I really, really, really want to see. Okay. Just because I get even more focused on the movie and I don't want to re-see things. Even though sometimes in trailers, stuff don't even make the movie that's in the trailer. Facts. And Very I, true. And I'm like, wait, that was, wait, where's that one scene from the trailer? Yeah. I don't know. It was just a thing I stopped doing. Um. So like, for for Wakanda, I've, I'll see the teasers, but like okay, last the long, final official one, yes. I'm like no, because it's right before the movie comes. Yes, out. I got you. And you know, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, they've been doing some major promotions. So, but, I mean, you you might have saw the first trailer. They didn't release about three of them bad boys already. Clips mm-hmm. and different posters. And oh, post! Yeah. I said posters. I want the poster. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, but um, yeah. So what does it take to learn to use that spear, that bow? You've done (laughs) hours and hours of training, but how proficient is it? How difficult is it? Because I always look at, you look at Keanu Reeves and John Wick and you look at just anyone learning all these tactics and you're like, and when they do it really well, you're like, wow, they really put in the work and learned besides the physical transformation. Like, is it frustrating? Like, what does it take to get to that level? Uh, That's a great question. So when... I did the first Black Panther. I didn't know anything about bow staff. Had no had no clue what it was. Um, that is what we trained with to help prepare us for that transition on screen with the spears because mm-hmm. we were working with spears on on camera. Mm-hmm. We did bow staff eight to nine hours a day Whoa. working on bow staff Calluses from the and- spins. Yeah, spins hand twirls around the back. I mean, we even had little, you know, little tricks that they kind of taught us. And it's great when you're doing it on your dominant hand and all that. You're like, oh, I got this, you know. But then you also need to do your non-dominant hand. And Mm -hmm. so for me, my non-dominant hand was my left hand. And so that first um, time when I got to Wakanda, uh, Wakanda, (laughs) well, technically it was Wakanda. But the first time when we started working, it was like November 5th. Mm -hmm. It was right before Thanksgiving. So we had like three weeks of training and then we had like our hiatus and then we came back during that little hiatus my best friend's husband made me a weighted very heavy bow Mm. staff that i used to do bow staff training on my own time with my left hand Mm. because i was like yo this this goes back to me being an athlete putting in the work because i was like i am not coming back here not knowing how to spin this spin this thing Mm -hmm. on my left hand. I came back, I would never forget, the um, fight choreographer, fight coordinator said, yo, Janisha, you are killing the game with that bow staff. Mm -hmm. He said, somebody went home and put in some work. Yo, like, look at your, your, yeah. He's like, your left hand's just as good as your right. Bam, facts. And ever since then, when we came back, I wouldn't even eat lunch. I would be doing bowl staff during lunch, during lunch. Mm-hmm. And so when you say, you know, how well was it? How, that was some crazy stuff. You're you're filling muscles that you didn't even know you had, yeah. you know, because you're twirling this thing. You're doing all this. Shoulders are hurting. Arms are hurting. But just to be able to transition that to your to your next hand or strike effectively or strike accurately, toss the spear if you need to spin it that takes time and that puts in, you got to put in work. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I was putting in extra work outside of the nine hours I was doing at the training facility with, with the stunt team, with the core team. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat my lunch. I was standing up working on both staff. You know, I don't care that y'all eating your lunch. This is my time. I could choose whatever I want to do with my lunch. Cause sometimes you get the Mm -hmm. looks, you know, when, you know, a lot of people, even in the world, I'm sure you can relate if, you know, the group of people are doing something and you're kind of over here working on yourself and people are like, why you come sit down, Johnny? It's like, no, I'm good. Johnny's not doing anything bad. Johnny just want to, 
you know, perfect and work on some stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, come eat your lunch. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll eat later. I'm working on this. Mm -hmm. You know, don't mind me. I'm working on me. You know, so I would do that during lunch. I have my um, best, my best friend's husband's make that weighted bow staff. I brought that back with me and I was just working on it. So fast forward to now, I can do double-handed bow staff at the same time. Like right and left, I'm doing them both at the same. I, I have video out there of me doing both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Send me that, I wanna check it out. Yeah, and um, I love it. I have fallen in love with bow staff. I did a whole video one time to um, Shawnee. She's a... a, a artists uh, her song yeah it's like whoa work it girl work it girl and i'm just twirling my bow staff on the ground spinning around on the floor never let it touch the ground never stopped yeah you could just blow up your tiktok like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. do it to different songs yeah just... yeah i think i have a broom around here okay. <laughs> have you try it out? but yeah so it was just um awesome learning that new discipline and i was very proud of myself mm -hmm. um i'm big into celebrating wins and stuff and my my team my squad is too and i was celebrating that that win of like oh i i came back mm -hmm. i killed it like you know he, he he's he noticed you know i put that work in coach noticed you know and um yeah so yeah, and then you just still build on it. You mm -hmm. just still build on. Now you're now you're trying to teach yourself new tricks. Now you're trying to see, you know, make sure that you just keep the game going. You know, that throwing is flawless. Up, it yeah, throwing you. it, yeah, throwing it up with the right, catch it with the left. You know, but and coming back doing the second one, a little rusty, right? Because it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. New stuff, but it doesn't leave you. It, you know, it doesn't leave you. Um, so it's like riding a bike. Just like riding a bike, you pick it back up. You're like, hey, friend. You know, you're doing all that. And this time around, our training felt like a boot camp. Like the first time it was, you know, we did a lot of training indoors for the most part, you know, roles working on that. Cause some of us were stunned. Some of us had an athletic background. Mm -hmm. Some of us didn't, but this time around, we all went through like this. I felt like I was a Marine. Only thing I didn't do was crawl through some mud. We was outside. We was doing like a mile to two miles a day in Ooh. the morning before we even started anything else. Dropped our bags. The choreographer, choreographer, coordinator, choreographer would be like, okay, y'all, you're going to run. And we'd run around Tyler Perry Studios, this one little route that we had mm -hmm. every morning. Every morning. I that was think the warm up. I, that, was the, that was the warm up. And then we started doing stances you know, working on our squats. Cause he was saying, look, you're going to be in those positions on set. You're going to be on that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was, that was some crazy. That was, I shout out every Marine on planet earth. Cause I don't know how they do it. Cause I felt like I was a Marine. There you go. I was out there like, Oh, yo, help please. You know, it was, it was some intense training. Take me out, coach. <laughs> it was crazy. Cows was burning. Yeah, and you would, and he'd, he'd hold us there, mm -hmm. and he wanted to make sure we were all a team. So everybody had to be in the same position at the same time, right? Squatted at the same part. I couldn't be low and the other person be high. It was mm -hmm. like, no, get lower. Hey, you girl, lower. You know, because the camera doesn't lie, and if you're all in sync and practice, you're gonna look good on film. Exactly, exactly. That was his whole. That mm -hmm. that was his whole message. Yeah, we are a unit. We're a team, and yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's what, again, I respect the craft. I know yes. how much goes into it. You know, sometimes you hear people like, why did they get paid so much to do that? I'm like, I've been on set. Like, I've yes. done 14 hour days. Like, yes. go see what it's like. And then you just got to be turned on, just on, go. So, like, it's tough. Yeah, you're getting paid well. Like, yep. you can't complain. And it is what it is. You should be able to get paid well for anything that you do at every level. Absolutely. And you know, people say that, why didn't you pay so much? Oh, well, they're, they're, just, they're just doing that. It's because we make it look easy. Because we put in all the work and now we've made it look easy. So now you think you can make some stupid slight comment mm -hmm. and say, oh, they get paid so much. Oh, that, I could do that. No, no, no. You think you can because I've, I've made it look so easy with my hustle and my grind and my work. You know, I can't tell you how many people reach out and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do such no problem. Like, OK, what what type of um? have you had any like martial arts background? Have you had any like tumbling? No, no, no work. You've had no work. But 
I love the fact that you acknowledge that mm -hmm. I have made this look so easy. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I'll translate it here because I have a saying. It says, you'll say that you can make this, but you won't. Most people talk. Most won't do it. And then the people are like, well, you just paint love. Like, it's so easy. I can do that. Like, well, then just do it. Mm. And then they try to do it like I do. And like, oh, it doesn't look like yours. I'm like, but make it yours. Like, don't make it mine. But yeah. that applies to everything. Everything. Yeah. Talk versus action. Let's just do it. Yeah. And there is no, and what people don't realize is there's no, you know, right way to get into this industry. You know, I basically got in, I don't have people in my family that do stunts. No one in my family is a Emmy nominated stunt woman like I am, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Be proud of that. Yeah. Be okay. Proud of that. No one else is like that. I, I created my own, you know, paths. You know, you, we create our own luck, if you want to say that, mm -hmm. how we get somewhere. You know, I came from, Track and field, bobsledding, acting as a as a jock on sets, getting booked on roles, mm -hmm. and that's how I got here. You know, somebody else might have got into stunts and acting through their circus work, being an acrobat. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? Someone might, else might have got there because their daddy is a director. There is no right or wrong yeah. way. You know, but a lot of people won't even make a way. You know, they don't even make their own way. That's facts. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so one last thing that you said a little bit ago, and we kind of said it when I had you say, "Yeah, you own that." <laughs> Celebrating your wins. You just said you're really good at that. I actually tend to be kind of bad at that because I'm always looking no. at what's next. Not in a bad way. Okay, okay. It's more like, where am I going next? Where am I? It's not that I don't want to celebrate it. Is I'm just looking playing such a far long game that I get lost in the future. Mm. But what is it that you do to help you actually? Focus on celebrating things because I've thought I've come across a lot of people that have a hard time celebrating the win. Yeah, and and um, celebrating the wins is just really just acknowledging you know the work that it took for you to get there. You know, I am very big into my faith. I am Team Jesus all day, mm -hmm. and I say this all the time. It was through my obedience from shaving my head on the first panther that has allowed me to get where I am now mm. because I prayed for Marvel. I prayed for all that. And then when the position, when the, when the opportunity presented itself to me, almost turned it down. Cause I was told I had to shave my head. You're mm. talking, I had about 25 inches of hair down my back. Okay. Wow. And I thought that me shaving my head was going to make me look like a boy, look ugly, all these different things. And I talked to my pastor and he's like, wait, Jesus sacrificed all of it on the cross. You can't sacrifice your hair. Like, isn't this mm. what we've been praying for? Like, my brother was like, hair grows back. What are you, what, look like a boy. What? You're not gonna look like a boy. Stop this, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it was my obedience to God giving me that blessing that has, that opened the doors mm. for other things. I had no idea Avengers Infinity War was coming. Avengers Endgame was coming. Mm -hmm. But I truly believe I got all of that from my obedience, right? So then fast forward, I'm celebrating wins because I'm staying obedient, I'm staying true, I'm not sacrificing morals, I'm not sacrificing my, I'm, I'm keeping mm. integrity in the midst of all this. Keeping integrity is huge. Yes, so I celebrate that because I'm not here because I stabbed somebody in the back or I told a lie on someone or I killed, still cheated, connived. None of that. I'm here because I was obedient to God and I've been true to myself and I've been working hard. Mm -hmm. So let's celebrate that. You know, let's mm -hmm. celebrate the fact that I got an Emmy nomination because I've worked really hard for the past 11 and 12 years mm -hmm. and had a bunch of no's along the way, but they didn't stop me. You know, I've had a bunch of people try to set up hurdles Cause that's what happens when people see you moving. Look, the devil is busy mm -hmm. and the devil will pop up when he see you in pursuit mm -hmm. about to go get, you know, get a win, get a level up. And so let's celebrate the fact that they're popping up of the hurdles, the people who you thought were for you in your camp show true colors and you still were able to be persistent and win. Mm -hmm. Cele celebrate that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, you know, when you really think about, what you went through to the journey the journey it's the journey and the pursuit of the goal knowing that this is not how your story ends like the emmy nomination is, isn't how it's going to end i'm going to get it i'm going to be an emmy winner you know the nomination is just step one yep. 
So okay, they see me. Okay, Let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and I have a very good squad and team around me, and we celebrate wins. We celebrate auditions. Hey, you got an audition? Let's celebrate that. That's great because mm. there's a lot of people who didn't. Oh, you got a call back? We're celebrating it. Yeah. 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 No. Well said. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you my favorite question. Okay. As we start wrapping this thing yes. up. Yes. How would you define or how do you define mm-hmm. living a life through love? How do you define living a life through love? Okay. <laughs> I define living a life through love in... That's a, that's, yo, it got me in here critical thinking. Okay, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great question. We'll music on. Yeah, dude, dude. Oh, shoot, I got, I got 30 seconds left. Okay, wait. <laughs> no, no, no okay. rush, no rush. Don't worry. Just, um, you know, as soon as I heard when you said love, I just thought about Christ. And I was just like, wow. Um, and so how I live my life is I would like, people to see God's light shine through me. Mm. Um, Meaning I'm going to do whatever it is to make sure that what I do does not um, have anything to do with, let me see if I word this right. I live a life through love knowing that I am very confident doing what I need to do and I can help you do what you need to do, even if it's the same thing that I want to do. Mm. Right? So Christ would help anybody, right? And not have to feel like, oh, well, they're taken from me or, or they, or, or, cause I like this, I'll, I'll use this as an example. People always say, well, man, you know, they didn't want to help because they felt like I was competing with them. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's enough work out here for everybody. Mm. There is enough work out here for everybody. You don't have to not help somebody because you think they're going to take away from you. Last time I checked, I'm not a casting director. You know, I don't cast projects. I don't do all that. And if I wanted to, I will just be a content creator, which I am. You know, so I think living a life through love is understanding. I understand my authority. I walk in my authority, know that I can get whatever it is I want to get. I can make whatever I want to make. I can do whatever I want to do. And I can still help you get where you need to go Mm. because it's not going to affect anything I got going on because what's for you is for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to help you. As I help myself and I'll be totally, totally fine. And if you reach where you're trying to get to, I'm not mad about that because I still going to get what I need to get. If you get yours first, I get mine first. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of how I navigate this planet. I know that what I'm doing doesn't affect anybody negatively at all. And I know that I'm destined for greatness. And so whatever I do, and whatever I put my mind to and whatever I put out there in the universe is going to happen. Regardless if you want to do exactly what I want to do. <laughs> Did that answer your question? That's respect right there. Honestly, what you're saying, to keep it super simple, yeah. you operate out of abundance. There is plenty for everyone to go around. And I'm going to help you because you're not taking away from me. And I'm not taking away from you. At all. So I like how you... And a, mani- a manifestation. Thank you. Look at you. Come on, narrowing all of that down. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Ex- well, my absolutely. Job is just to listen to you. That's yes. I, yeah. yeah. Come on, Professor. <laughs> New title. New title. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's exactly what I'm saying. And that's how I navigate this planet. Yeah. No, no. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for showing up big. Yeah. Uh, love your personality. This is a great conversation. Thank you. I can't wait to watch the movie. Yes, you're going to like you it. Action. Yes. And uh, where can everybody find you? So, everyone can find me on my social media platforms. I'm very active on Instagram at Hollywood Lady J. That's Hollywood Lady and then just the letter J. Mm-hmm. And then on Facebook at Janisha Adams Guignard. And um, yeah, check out Black Panther Wakanda Forever. 
theaters november 11th but i also have other projects coming out too what else what else can we see you so i have my first leading acting role congrats thank you and a christmas movie called letters at christmas you know what i guarantee i'm gonna end up watching because my wife watches everything <laughs> christmas <laughs> so they're the let best me know when it's out because i'll put it up for her yes yeah, so it's called letters at christmas and i'm the lead actress opposite dean kane mm. yes yeah, so, look this is the marvel DC crossover the world's been waiting right. for. Who's okay, OG yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that comes out later this month, and then I also. Um, that's what a good service. question. So I don't know. I just know it's through Lionsgate. Um, I don't have the date yet. Right. Sorry. Someone will give it. To yeah, me. letters at Christmas, <laughs> and then I'm also working on a short film that we're really hoping to be a TV series. It's called The Jamaican Queen and Her Jerk King. Mm, yes. I see that. Yeah. Jerk yeah. You get it right, and that's what actors um, Kelly Perrine and Danny Arroyo. They're really, really good. And then next June, I start shooting a horror movie where I'm the lead actress. I won't watch you in that. <laughs> No offense. No, you have to. I don't watch horror. I'm not, maybe I'll, maybe I'll check out the trailer. I'll watch the trailer. Okay, you watch the trailer. Okay. <laughs> horror is the one thing I, I'll do. I watch everything. Okay. Just horror. I just my imagination is too much. It's just <laughs> it doesn't do it for me. What about if it's a psychological thriller? Oh that, yeah, I watch that. Okay, all day. okay, yeah. I'm talking about like horror. Horror, horror. Like, I don't do okay. Halloween type. Okay. Or Annabelle or anything. Oh like that. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, creepy, creepy. Man. I'm, yes. Look, I just, Love. I do love Tom's <laughs> Christmas movie. <laughs> love. Yeah, Marvel movies all day. Yes. But yeah. Awesome. This is awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This oh, is great. Welcome. Yeah. This you're is awesome. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in to Live Through Love. If you love this episode, you'll love this episode.